There's, there's several things that we need to do. Obviously, this is a, a big lift um, that we that we need. We, we usually get around 150 billion cubic meters of gas every year from Russia. And we've set very clearly the objective um, that we will end this dependency and that we will have no Russian fossil fuels uh, in five years' time. That's the target which has been proposed by the European Commission and, and supported by all the leaders. Now, as you say, um, one, one thing that we need to do in the short term is to find alternative supplies of, of those fossil fuels uh, to replace um, what, what we need for, for the short term for the coming years. But we also need to make a big push on renewable energy and on energy efficiency and energy savings. And the European Commission has proposed to increase our legally binding targets for 2030, that we would go from 40 percent to 45 percent of renewable energy, and that we would improve our energy efficiency um, going up from 9 percent to 13 percent legally binding target. OK, so objective number one for the EU is uh, reducing dependency or actually eliminating um, uh, dependency on, on, on Russian uh, gas. I get that. Uh, talk to us about uh, what this energy deal between uh, the European, par uh, European Union, Egypt and Israel uh, means, because uh, I'm sure there's going to be some out there uh, going to be say, all right, look at uh, the European Union. They criticize the human rights record of both Israel and Egypt, but yet it's going to a deal. So is the name of the game anything but Russian gas? Well, I think what we see um, is is the the situation with Russia, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, is that this is you know a, a deeply unreliable partner, and that we can't depend on uh, an energy relationship with them. Uh, we also see that the the fossil fuels uh, is a major part of the Russian economy, and is is fueling that war. So really, the the political imperative is is very strong to get away from from Russian Russian fossil fuel, and that is only you know further. Um, accelerating our, our moves under the European Green Deal. Now, we're going to be working with, with lots of different partners to find these alternative energy sources. And you mentioned some of them there that we've reached agreements with this week. Um, and we also have an agreement in place with the United States. Uh, we're talking to our partners in, in Norway and Azerbaijan and other places around the world. So, you know, we, we know that the dependency on Russia has been very high uh, and that we need to talk to a number of dif different partners. And, and what we do is then is we we more we have a more diverse energy supply base, which I think is is important for Europe. And then, as I said, we really need to keep enhancing the the rollout of renewables because then we have really secure our energy mm. independence if we're producing energy at home in Europe. How do you think Russia uh, is going to react to this? Well, I think you know the the Russian reaction. Um, to this um, is, you know, is, is not our, our top concern. I think, okay. you know, what we need to do is, is to, as Europeans, react to the Russian aggression in Ukraine. And that's what we're doing with, you know, policies across the board. We have six packages of economic sanctions in place to try and bring this war to an end as quickly as possible. And one of the things that we need to do as well is to end um, the, the dependence on Russian fossil fuels and end those revenues for the Russian state.